and welcome in our 11th video update. Uh, it's been a while because we are hard to work on the upcoming alpha release and since it's going to be a major update with a lot of new features, it's a lot of work and we didn't have time to uh, spend on uh, making fancy videos. Uh, the alpha is going to be released very soon after E3. Uh, it's going to be presented at V3. I'm going to be there uh, together with uh, a lot of my colleagues and we are going to be showing it to the present uh, business partners behind closed doors. So if you are from media uh, and want to see what's, what we are cooking, uh, uh, please contact our PR guys and uh, we can arrange a meeting. Uh, we also plan, since we are there and there's going to be a lot of us, uh, we also plan to have some small meet and greet meeting after E3, maybe on Thursday in some pub. So let us know if you are interested on our uh, social networks. Uh, we will try to arrange something where we can uh, talk to our fans and maybe show them the alpha as well if there is some kind of projector or, so, or stuff. So everybody is probably very interested in what's going to be in the next alpha. Uh, it's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, it's really a major update. Let me start with the size of the world we are going to show. I would say that it's several times bigger than current uh, alpha uh, region. Uh, there is going to be a new village, uh, soldier camp, uh, a lot of new forests. Uh, so I would say it's like three, four hundred percent bigger than what you can currently play uh, on Steam. Uh, the most interesting thing probably for everyone would be uh, combat. We finally will show uh, first version of combat. It's going to, so far it's going to be just one on one with one uh, type of sword, uh, but it should be almost fully functioning. I can't wait uh, to show it to the people. Uh, another major thing is, are the new quests. There is going to be, we already have several quests. Uh, they are fully voiceovered, uh, but this time we will add several new quests. Uh, uh, with even more, more voiceovers and dialogues uh, and we also hope that everything is going to be finally lip-synced. Uh, the quality of the lip-sync is still just temporary, we are working on it, uh, it's just the first experiment with the technology, uh, but finally people will not just stare at you with closed mouth. Uh, so another improvement. We also changed a lot of uh, skin shaders and uh, character. Uh, models, so I believe that characters will look much better than before. Another big thing is the horse riding, so the horse is going to be there, uh, you can ride it. Uh, it's been fully remodeled, so it's totally different uh, than the horse we've shown in the prototype. Even clothing works on the horse uh, right now, I don't know if we will use it because uh, you will get very basic low-cost horse in this quest, but another big thing uh, is that we are going to release it in several languages. Uh, not voiceovers, but we will have subtitles for German, French, maybe even Czech. The quest themselves, uh, they are finally uh, including combat, so it's not just talking and uh, doing stuff, bringing something to someone. Uh, so finally there is going to be some combat, some fighting. Uh, uh, is going to be much more interesting, I would say, and there is also, since it's a much bigger uh, part of the world, there is also much more, they are much more interconnected together. So if you play something, it uh, affects something else. Uh, it affects your stats. Uh, there is also an RPG uh, development finally, so you can uh, improve your character stats. Uh, so I really hope that you are going to like it. Uh, it's nicely shaping up or uh, we are getting stuff together and it's finally looking as a, as a game. We've already sent 25,000 codes to our backers, so we have 25,000 beta testers or alpha testers right now. So I hope that everyone will play it and enjoy it uh, the same as we do. Uh, <laughs> And now several other things. We have also finally uh, put together our merchandise shop so you can buy t-shirts and caps and more stuff that's coming up uh, very soon. Uh, we also have managed to establish a deal with a small uh, brewery so you can buy a Warhorse beer uh, in nice sets. 
I've done uh, signs for it together with our lead artist Mickey. I think that they are pretty cool. So you can buy the four pack with four different kinds of beer. Uh, it's going, it should be available for most of the countries in Europe. And so far it's very expensive to send it to US. So uh, we are trying to find some solution how to ship it there because the shipping is more expensive than the beer itself. And we tried to ship it to someone and he received uh, some battle bottles broken. So we are trying to find some solution. But if you are from Europe, you can buy Warhorse beer. Uh, I can say it's really good. I like it. I like the taste. It's a good brewery. And finally, what's going to be next in our next video update? We plan to release it, uh, release it uh, next month uh, together with new Alpha. And it will be all about the combat system. So I will tell you together with the guys who are working on it, everything that you need to know about the combat system, how we make it, why it's done the way it is done, how hard it was, how we uh, worked with the fencers, uh, which style we implement, everything's going to be there. Uh, and since uh, we were uh, at the Battle of the Nations uh, World Championship, we are actually the sponsors of Czech national team. Uh, you can also see a real medieval hardcore combat. And you can see me in the armor fighting with American uh, uh, member of the American national team in arena, uh, getting my ass kicked. It was funny and a little bit claustrophobic experience because the armor is really something heavy and you can, I couldn't breathe in it. Uh, so stay tuned for the next video update. Now in the rest of the video update you will not see me but our lead artist uh, Kuba who will tell you something about how we make art. So this is Kuba or in English Jacob and he's our lead uh, artist. And we are going to show you how we produce art uh, currently. So it usually starts with uh, me or some other designer uh, doing a map or layout of the scene. In this case, we are going to talk about the whole world. So it started with me uh, looking at the maps, uh, selecting the place where the game will uh, take place. And then I basically photoshopped a map. Uh, and after that, we uh, bought a satellite height map and that's right. where the work for the artists start. So, yes. So I can show you at first the height map we got, and that's the one. It's not the actual data. We had to shrink the world a bit. It was mainly just a basic from which we uh, started working on it. Of course, the height map is not detailed enough. So some of the things we have to do manually by hand. Let's say a riverbed or some small streams. They need to be carved into the terrain in the editor, let's say here, this was done by hand and it's pretty easy in CranGen. You just select something here, some tools, and then you can shape the terrain in different ways. The accuracy of the height map we bought is about one meter per pixel or something, or five meters per pixel. And yeah. So you get a little bit messy terrain, but it's pretty accurate for what we need. We yeah. can see the roads or, or, or rivers. And it's definitely a big help when you're trying to create a whole world. So the next thing, when you have the proper height of the terrain, you want to paint the terrain types on it. For example, the grass, as we have here, or some fallen leaves in a forest, mud and stuff. And that's as well done pretty easily. I'll just select the material that we have to create before and then I'm able to paint it over the terrain and everything looks great. I guess that we have several types of uh, texture, several layers of textures. Uh, the one is the, the big one with yes. low detail as well. that defines the color mm -hmm. uh, of the terrain and the vistas. Right. And then we you apply. Can yeah, you can see how the different terrain types or map types blend when we get away from it and now we can see only the macro map that is painted by hand in Photoshop. If we get closer it blends again into the different terrain types. Usually we start with painting those types and then recreate the proper um, macro, map. macro map out of them in Photoshop so it reflects what's actually in there. 
not like this. Yep. We, we can't use the satellite macro map or something because it's totally different from yes. what it's been uh, in 15th century. Definitely. And you have trees there and different fields, stuff, so it's not very usable. Next thing would be vegetation, I guess. So in CryEngine, it's again pretty easy to paint with vegetation. Let's say I select here a simple grass. It's not just one grass, it's a couple of different grass types bunch, uh, bunched together in a group. And if I select it and click paint here, I'm able to fill the world with grass. How many types of uh, flora do we have? We have over 70 different kinds of grasses and plants. And we have a um, couple of trees. At the moment, about eight types. We have also about 10 plus types of bushes, but we are still working on it. It's still pretty early, so and there the will be more. The trees and vegetation are done by Damien, I guess? Yes. And how long it takes to make a tree? Uh, because they look awesome. Yeah, they look awesome and it takes some time. Like week, two? Like in weeks, definitely. Two weeks, three weeks, it depends really on how hard it is. Uh, like, it depends on the actual kind of tree. We don't, we don't, it's worth saying that we don't use speed tree or anything like that. Everything's hand modeled, uh, custom work yes. for the game. So we are not well, using any generators and actually other things. Actually, we do a bit. Uh, for the branches, the branches are done in speed tree uh, or grow effects. Um, but then it's baked onto the custom made, handmade mesh. Uh, but it's pretty much a common practice in games. It crashed? Yes, it doesn't happen, <laughs> ever. This is the first time I see a crash screen, so sorry. So. <laughs> okay, so we're back. It happens sometimes, but you never know when. So we've been talking about vegetation. Also the part of the vegetation are, for example, those small rocks, or these are just piles of mud, and we have more different kind of these things, like planks are also a vegetation in this instance. And horse manure, of course, it has to be there. It's uh, medieval times. The next thing to fill the level is to add some small props. Let's say those stones, making a nice border to the graveyard. And the graves themselves. For that, we are already using some references from our concept artist or references from the different places we've been to and took photo of them. So I can show you here what our references uh, looks like. So these are the pictures from Užice, a little village in the corner of our map. And we visited it to gather uh, some references some nice pictures of how it looks at the moment. We of course have to then run them through our historian to determine what was changed, what is newer, uh, what can't be seen. These are already pictures of uh, the church in Užice and we have a lot of them. So we are trying to gather for a day usually uh, as much as possible at the place. So most of the buildings are rebuilt several times during the history, so uh, we are looking only for the parts that are authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly, there is there's a lot of Gothic stuff left in this case. Yes. Okay, the next stage is to give those to the concept artists, or they're usually part of the team that surveys the area. This is how it should look like in 15th century. So a lot of consultations with our historian mm -hmm. uh, and as accurate uh, reconstruction of the look place as possible in the end. Yeah. And finally, concept art that should show the place that it should look in the final, final version, game. final game. So let's say this church with the interiors, how long it took? Over a month. So on top of all the uh, painting or concept art, research and all that stuff, it takes one man month to do such a building with interior. 
yeah, we are trying to recreate uh, it, everything pretty much in uh, as high quality as possible for the open world. So the textures might not be as sharp as you would like to, but unfortunately we have a big area to cover with them and the current computers, especially the current consoles, can't handle everything, so we have to compromise at some places. But we are trying and I think it looks just fine. Okay, so I was instructed that our game doesn't look just fine. It looks awesome. <laughs> so wow. let's see how it really looks. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's exactly. so cool. Uh, the church itself is uh, made of different models. The scaffoldings are separate. The interior and exterior are also separate. All those little graves are definitely separate. And each of those have a couple of different materials on them. Uh, for example, here we can see the material for the insides of the church. If I click here, you will see that the places which uses these materials will flash for a second. So it's really a lot of work to create all of these. Each material also have a couple of textures. We have the diffuse textures, the normal maps, together with uh, the gloss maps, pretty much the smoothness maps, and also the detail maps. So up close, you see everything much sharper. It's a lot of materials, a lot of textures in each of the materials, and that really means a lot of work. And also a lot of polygons to create. If I switch to uh, wireframe view, you see that it's pretty detailed. Also, we use uh, decros, which is, well, we are not the only ones who do it, who of do course, it but, but, does it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, usually in the past, those, those places where two different uh, models basically uh, interfere uh, were just looking weird, they, they were just cut through each other. Yeah. Now everything's smooth, there is smooth uh, interconnection or... or, or right, intersection. Intersection okay. of it. Uh, everything looks very natural and it's a lot of extra work, I would say. Yeah, it is. But it's worth it, because it looks awesome. You can see all the pictures uh, we took. And the, the yeah, let's find model the pictures again. actually has it. Okay, so I found him, he's here, that's it. Is the church actually Roman or Gothic originally? Don't is ask it, me. I, I guess this is Gothic. You would have to ask our so it should be. It should be newer in the game. It shouldn't be as worn well, off. Well, yes, no? part of it, part <laughs> of it. The guy who's, who done it <laughs> signals that it's right. <laughs> is it older than, like it's already several hundred years old? Oh, so it's correct. Even such a detail. Yeah. Was consulted, I see. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, with all the scaffoldings around, uh, the church is at the moment undergoing some reconstructions. So this part is newer and nicer. And this part is still old and shabby. The thing is that we have several hundred buildings in the game. Uh, some of them are just, uh, well, let's say copy-paste, uh, similar buildings. We have, a, we have a toy box for it, basically. But lots of them are very unique, like this one. Mm -hmm. We have like six different churches in the game, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, uh, that number. So somebody had to spend almost a year just to make churches we have in the game. And that's just one type of the buildings, or uh, it's a lot of work uh, on the art. For the next thing I can show you, I guess the time of day would be nice. Because when you have all these models and vegetation and terrains and stuff, you also need to light it properly. So without the light, you won't be able to see pretty much anything. So how you go about it? Uh, the hard thing is that since we are doing an open world, open time game with dynamic time of day, 
it will get dark, you will go through the night and then it will start, uh, the sun will start to rise again. And everything has to work for each of these uh, lighting conditions. Uh, for that, we are using the system called PBR. It's pretty much, uh, those are the guide guidelines, how to work in a physically accurate manner. So everything works together pretty well. If you said PBR it correctly. means physical based rendering. Exactly. And with, if you follow these rules, it's possible for you to create actually uh, assets that are looking good in every lighting conditions that is physically accurate again. So it looks very photorealistic, let's say. Yes. There's also some eye adaptation here. Can go even darker. And in a couple of seconds, we should be able to see something. Yes, there it is. And still nothing is shining through. Nothing is too dark or darker than it should be. But of course, everything looks better in the day. So you basically need to set up lighting for every single hour in a game? Yes, it's done oh, with curves, every single hour in, in a day, not in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have all these different curves here set up already. This is, for example, the color of the sun. You can see that the, during the dawn and dusk, it's uh, very saturated. And then when I go to midnight, it's extremely white. Not all the way white, but it's pretty whitish. Not midnight. Uh, noon, noon, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mistake. Uh, this is not usually the time of day you would take pictures because it doesn't look very nice. All the, you have a big contrast uh, in everything because the shadows are much darker than the light, than the uh, sunny areas. And also everything looks very flat. But still, it's, I think it's, imp it's really uh, important to have even this time of day uh, in the game because it really makes it realistic. We are not trying to set the whole game in the nicest golden hour in the morning or in the evening, although everything looks probably better but we are trying to achieve some realism. So we're trying to include all the different times of day. So that's it guys. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope it wasn't too boring. And this is how we are creating the game for you. How many people is, is here in the office? Well, artists? Uh, we have 11 3 artists at the moment and we have a couple of more. We have three more uh, concept artists over the wall and one historian, which is also sitting, uh, who is also sitting with the, the concept artist. And we had to do like 16, 16 square, square kilometers. kilometers of terrain. It's a lot of work, really. For a very small team. Yeah. We are not doing any outsourcing at the time. Mm -hmm. And we don't plan it, because it sucks. Yes. <laughs> and still, we're making an awesome game. So, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. So that's how we roll, that's how we do it here, I hope you like it and stay tuned for next month where I'm going to show you the combat and how you can play the new alpha. Bye! The world started that I and a couple of other guys... No, you see, then we are ready. Stay fresh. But if you want to focus on it, then it would... To by mohli z tý krve dělat léky pro hyperaktivní děti, ty. Jsem měl narovat, to bych nebral menší než on, co? Tak teď to je, teď to je správně. Super. Ne, Už se na to extrémně těším. Chceš dát ten Božko pryč teda? Jo, prosím. Tak ho dáme takhle. Ne, dám, on tady ne kdybyste měli aspoň nějaký normální room a nebo Božko Spice, tak jako neřeknu, ale... To mě i rodina vidět dělá do tohle. To je kvalita premium, ty vole, to je no, 1920, ty vole.